Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 9th of August stand up meeting for FPGA work at Open Research Institute. How is everybody doing? Um, today, we're going to talk about what we've done over the past week or so and what we have planned to do over the next week uh, if the, we need any resources and if well, there's any roadblocks in our way. All right, so um, why don't you? Start us off, Everest. Hello and welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, I see that there is a lot of uh, improvements, so it's good. Uh, sorry, I am many in holidays, and I uh, follow uh, all the all the stuff uh, from far, but uh, it seems okay. Uh, I have few questions about uh, the next steps, but uh, hope that uh, everyone is okay and uh, wait maybe for sum up before asking my question. Back to you. All right, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to talking to you. All right, James, uh, tell us how it's going in uh, Remote Lab South. Uh, things are going fairly well here, Remote Lab South. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to our gigabit fiber internet. We've gotten all of the connections like towards the building. And then in the coming weeks, we're gonna have someone come by and do all the connections within the building, which should greatly improve connectivity to Remote Lab South. Uh, on the grants side, though, I might save that for the other meeting. We don't have nearly as good news, but I'll just say, leave that for the grants meeting that comes after this stand up. Okay. Very good. And I think we're still working on getting the roof and the internal electrical settled. Is there anything that you need for that, for for the build out of the physical plant? Um, nothing currently. We're getting the, we're just continuing on there, getting work done. Oh, okay. Yeah. The fiber is, uh, is really good news. That'll help with the, all sorts of things, not just the equipment at the workbenches. Um, but also what we're talking about doing is interferometry site, and that's going to need some high speed uh, connectivity. So very much looking forward to that. All right. And Anshul, uh, go ahead. You have the floor. Hey, uh, nothing much to report. I'm just working on the next step to get the DMA working uh, with the PSPL communication. And uh, so looking at some samples and um, what all registers to use, what all config, and also simultaneously studying the code that Everest has shared for MQTT. Uh, it looks like a good framework for doing the testing. So uh, simultaneously also working on that. That's me. Okay, cool. All right, I'll talk a little bit about what I'm what I've done. So um, mainly, uh, if you can see on Slack, I've I've been told by the uh, the people, the nice people at Engineer Zone, the, um, that the framework that we use, like those Yocto layers with the core and the Xilinx, that actually gives us the thing that I was trying to install with the API download. So when you install or when you download the API uh, from, from analog devices, um, which sets up a directory structure with app and an API, and there's an example code, and then, then you export the um, some artifacts from the TES, uh, Transceiver Evaluation Software, which gives you all the things that you need to set up your transceiver. And so I thought that's how we use the, the Linux driver. Well, it turns out it's already in there with the Yocto layers. Uh, so, well, it made me feel a little bit silly, but, but okay. And so I backed up and I'm like, okay, so all of these calls should be there. And uh, that's that's where, where I'm at. So, so don't need to do anything extra. Don't need to download anything or compile anything extra. We should be able to, and I, I double checked, it's the exact same. Uh, DTS that we install when we walk through our procedure to get to the application layer. So we're, we're on the right track. I just was doing a lot of extra work. Uh, MQTT sounds amazing. And I think Everest has some, some, some questions about next steps and what we want to accomplish. I think what we want to do is to, to transmit over the air with uh, DVBS2 frames. Um, and I th think we're set up to do that. Um, yeah. And we should probably talk about that next. So I'm going to be quiet and uh, let Everest ask questions, or um, or or Anshul, you um, 
ask questions or to let's talk about how to get on on the air because I think we're we're ready to do that. Yeah, okay. So I said that you fix the issue with the address uh, of the PL. Um, I think that now all is uh, running okay uh, from yes. the, <clears throat> sorry, from the FPGA side. Then uh, on the PS side, then you have the example of the crypto uh, using MQTT. Um, uh, I um, so uh, the main uh, modification is to uh, uh, to set the right channels, which means that uh, I think that you use and you have installed IO on the um, uh, on the zinc, and um, then there is just some. Uh, String uh, access to uh, Eric's and takes well the, the right takes path in order to um, uh, to set it for the for the special uh, uh, DAC you use. Um, it's I think it's not a big modification. So if you have some question about that, I can easily answer that. Uh, the my main question is uh, Michelle is using is used the TES software, but maybe it's another uh, experience and not uh, dedicated to DVBS2. Uh, just wondering uh, why uh, using that uh, for now. But uh, if you have question, uh, let me know. Yeah, I think we have lots of questions. Um, so yeah, the TES, the transceiver evaluation software, uh, what it does is when you run it, you you use a GUI. So you use a graphical user interface to set up the uh, 80, the 9371. So so you can set up your the bandwidth and the frequency and, and the filters. You can actually go ahead and set up your transmit and receive filters and your clock regime. So you can do all of that in a relatively easy to use way. And then you save out the script. So you save out C files. And those C files have all of the calls to the API um, from analog devices that will walk through waking up your transceiver and setting it up. And so I thought, oh, well, OK, that made sense um, from the old fashioned or the, the you know, the, the API of source code. Um, and so it turns out that all this work that we did in order to get IIO, well, that that's what IIO uses under the hood. I don't need to make the like the the I don't I don't need to actually call all that stuff. We still need to set it up though. Um, at least that's what the uh, instructions say on some of those web pages. So and also in some of the forum posts. So it looks like even though I we don't need to pull in the entire source code of the API, uh, that we still need the to do the same sorts of things that that you you still need to set up your transceiver you still need to configure it and and that's where i'm at so i i asked uh on the engineer zone and like made sure try to trying to make sure like is this really do we really need something from tes still or is it all set up for us in iio in these layers um as i was hoping to be able to figure that out yesterday but it uh I, I'm, Today is the last day that I'm here before leaving for DEF CON. We leave tomorrow morning. So these sorts of questions might be answered next week uh, at the earliest. Uh, so so just, just letting you know where I'm at. Um, but the the strong recommendation was to go ahead and use the IIO and these these layers that we already have working. Um, and and how to actually write, like <laughs> how to use them. So I'm, I'm looking for like, where's the definitive set of calls that I use? These are higher layer, the IIO is higher layer than what I was um, what I was using. So the source code for the API, that's all built into IIO. That's what IIO uses at a lower level. So once again, uh, my, my background is uh, like, you know, assembly code and writing directly to registers. And I'm always assuming that's what I have to do, but but in the modern FPGA world, you don't. All of this stuff is is abstracted for us if we can just figure out how to get it to work. Um, and I, so I think we all, we have it now. I think it's actually working on the ZC706 and on the ADRV9371. And it's just gonna be like, oh, you know, here's the list of, of function calls. Here's what you can use. 
I think I think that's anyway that's where I'm at. Um, and I'm I'm I've used MQTT once before for a simple project on a uh, particle I/O board. So if there's, I know that the Pluto uses it and and functioned uh, and and was working over the air with it with MQTT. So that, I think that's probably the the best path forward is if we can get something transmitting over the air in the lab um, using the code that's already written for the Pluto. I think that's the best path forward. All right, back to you. Uh, I have. Sorry, you want to go ahead? Yeah, just I, I just understand that the TES is a more parallel, uh, uh, parallel way of uh, setting the register of uh, the ADCDAC. Um, uh, it's recommended if you run uh, no EOS. Uh, so if you don't, <coughs> sorry, if you don't uh, use Linux and uh, neither I.O. As soon as you have Linux on I.O., I think that the best, well, um, the easiest, easiest way is to use I.O. directly. Um, oh, okay, so I, do, I don't have to use the, that output stuff from TDS. I, I don't think so. Okay, um, thank you, that, that helps but, a lot. <laughs> but maybe, maybe there is, uh, some other tool in TS. I I, uh, I, I didn't know it uh, before. Uh, maybe there is <clears throat> some. Um, uh, uh, I see that that there is some NCO or something like that, which means that maybe there is uh, some component included in the FPGA. I don't know uh, because normally there is no NC NCO. Uh, in the FPGA uh, design. Um, so maybe the, it is another platform, well, another um, uh, architecture API. But as soon as you use Linux, I think it's not the, 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 the target of TES. Um, OK, yeah, that makes sense. The, the way uh, that I was that I, the way that I was looking at this was definitely more low level. So yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. The other way, well, the the, um, the MQTT way I set it, well, uh, normally there is no MQTT uh, on the on the Pluto. Um, but so you can you can use IO of a network or of a USB. Yes. And you can send all the command on that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I set, it's really I nice. Set, uh, we we we've been able to use um, the, both the Pluto and the, the ZC706, like w yeah. when we bring it up with IIO, being able to uh, yeah. use it as a remote station is really amazing. So so we can yeah. see that happening. That's that's okay, uh, but um, I set MQTT in order to uh, uh, have another abstraction <laughs> and do not use the IIO streaming, which is a little bottleneck. Um, so I try to have um, a very simple, um, a simple server, which means that uh, on the client you you don't have to have the live I/O uh, on your clients, which means that uh, right now on your PC you need uh, live I/O to. Um, um, to discuss with the server I/O from the platform, right? And, and using MQTT uh, is another just a little abstraction on that, which means that you you can do that uh, even by uh, don't know any I/O library, um, which means just sending some string. Over MQTT and uh, and it's okay. So there is some uh, command which is directly patched uh, from MQTT to IO, and there is some command which means that, for example, uh, if you write it to DVBS2 uh, tree, then it is the uh, server. Well, it is the, the there is some function on the um, 
on the Pluto or on the zinc, uh, which respond to uh, all that. Um, I don't know if it's very uh, understandable, understandable, but well, um, normally you, do, you don't need MQTT. Uh, I do this because it's simple to uh, order it uh, from uh, different devices. Um, but I think it's a good, uh, a, a good base and uh, this MQTT server uh, which is done well, which is dedicated for the Pluto, is easily uh, could be easily adapted to uh, the Z six seven o six, and um, um, it just uh, have to fork and uh, and and uh, send some I O string that differently. Uh, if I can have uh, a remote um, uh, remote platform, I could easily uh, adapt it also, but I think that uh, Anshul can do that if I can answer some uh, question about the code. Yeah, um, Paris, uh, I, I, did a, I, I did study about this MQTT, so I have a few questions. Uh, if, we, if we go into a bit deeper, when you say MQTT server, uh, and we have MQTT, MQTT client and MQTT subscriber, then there are broadcast messages and messages. So when you, if, if I talk about setup, this MQTT server is some, is, the, is, it, is it some software? Uh, because on an, I went to MQTT page and it said some softwares for client, some softwares for server. So what is MQTT server and where does it run? Does it run on the PS side? And what is it? Yeah, right now, um, right now the, the MQTT server is, is on the yeah on the um, PS side. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we can choose to have uh, MQTT server outside, uh, which means that uh, maybe on another PC, uh, which means that uh, on this PC on this server, you can have uh, several, uh, for example, DBBS two. Uh, in caller, um, uh, publish and uh, request the message from that. But right now, the, the easiest way is that the, the MQT server is on the Pluto. Okay. And and from your PC, uh, you are you are uh, MQTT client. So okay. you you subscribe to. Uh, um, uh, I need. I need to doc document it, but uh, as soon as the MQTT server is doing is running on the Pluto, then you can have uh, MQTT Explorer, for example, which is uh, subscribing to all channels, and you can see all the status and um, uh, that the Pluto is doing, and you can easily uh, um, write some uh, topics, uh, uh -huh. for example. Uh, frequency, uh, sample rate, and then uh, for DBS2 um, 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 typical, uh, uh, for example, the FEC and something like that. And all that you can see it uh, on the client, uh, uh, on the MQTT client uh, on your PC. So okay. uh, the, uh, if, you, if you see the firmware, uh, there is a MQTT server installed on the Pluto directly, okay. and and there is um, uh, I think there is Pluto controller on Pluto stream uh, process, and uh, the Pluto controller is um, is publishing to the MQTT server which is on the Pluto, but. Uh, and uh, so he publishing the status and the request and uh, wait for the request. Sorry, just just a minute. Okay. Yeah, sorry, some uh, family calls. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, mm. I can answer uh, if there is more detailed questions. Sorry, uh, I don't know if I'm clear. No, no, um, that's fine. You are, yes, you are. So uh, now, 
uh, I, I see the uh, link. I went to the, if I go to the GitHub, I see files, uh, various C files. One is for streaming. So if I have to install server and if I have to install client, so what are these? Uh, shall, uh, is there a software or script or shall I compile the code? Uh, what are these client okay. and server? Uh, the um, the MQTT server on the on the Zinc side, mm -hmm. is the classical uh, MQTT server. So you just have to uh, install a Mosquito. Mosquito, okay. Mosquito server. Okay. And um, just uh, yeah, uh, I can. Uh, well, you can you can see it on the uh, on the Beetroot side. Uh, it's uh, just a uh, classical component, okay? So it okay. just, uh, after that, on the, what you have to modify is the, well, it's called MQTT controller. That's a client. Um, and so MQTT controller is a client, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is one server, which is the Mosquito server, and mm -hmm. then, um uh, the mqtt controller process is publishing some status mm -hmm. and wait for uh, some command okay. for example setting frequency and then right. the setting frequency when when well the um, the mqtt controller uh, subscribe to uh frequency for example mm -hmm. and then when he uh when he received the message mm -hmm. he sent an io message okay internally okay uh -huh. so this is this message this io message you have to modify because it, right now it is dedicated to pluto yeah um uh and and it's just some string to uh, to modify. It's uh, okay. There is no really um, uh, algorithm or, or well, it's just some string because mm -hmm. the I/O have some uh, trees, mm -hmm. which is uh, channel one, two, three, etc., or something like that, and you just have to modify the string, but. I can point you uh, where all is uh, well, all is setting. So um, shall I share my screen with your Git repo yeah. or? Okay, let me see. Yeah, here. And uh, I, I can give you remote access also. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the repo. And so. Yeah, so, okay, this is on PS. Yeah. Okay, so you have, for example, um, so on MQTT control, um, Okay, should be MQTT and Delcam. Um, if you go to MQTT, okay, just uh, let me see, remember. Um, Uh, if you go to, uh, so MQTT and the command dot CPP. So this above, no, not this one. Yeah, this one line, uh, seven, six, 50, something like that. 750. Okay, so 
now you have some uh, just okay you can see 769 command rx frequency for example yep okay and so it's it send um so if you uh, uh well the mqtt is receiving this message mm -hmm. and send sysbus io device io uh, etc mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. okay so th this one should be adapted to uh, your mm -hmm. uh, special yeah. IO tree. Yeah, okay? got you. Yep, yep. Uh, you have the Eric's gain, Eric's format, and, and then you have the ticks. And, and all, all the sysbus I or something should be adapted to, uh, right. to your particular uh, right. I O three. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Okay. Right. So this is the MQTT control, which mean, which is mainly for uh, frequency and sample rate. Okay. Okay. And then mm -hmm. there is uh, the MQTT uh, handle stream. Mm -hmm which is uh, mainly for streaming. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is the DMA based. And this is here very important. Um, okay, try to remember. Uh, it is a, a, a process. Um, Which okay, right from buffer. So, sorry, a long time ago I didn't go that. Okay, there is a yeah a line uh, line nine hundred something like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, it gets some. Um, Data from the STD in mm -hmm. and uh, write it to IO mm -hmm. and uh, and for example nine hundred thirty you have some write byte from buffer bust mm -hmm. and then there is some pattern so right now it is not used any STD in it is some but test pattern. Mm -hmm. I, I used to uh, to test the, the FPGA code, mm -hmm. uh, and so you can you can see how it is done. Uh, the mm -hmm. there is a very important thing is to is the length mm -hmm. of what you uh, send to IO because mm -hmm. the FPGA side uh weight uh, from uh, uh frame length mm -hmm. and the frame length is depending well the uh, is depending on the fec yeah right okay mm -hmm. um i think that well we have discussed with shoto on that and mm -hmm. I think that there is not enough documentation. Well, we have to uh, detail how it works, but uh, um, that's if if you use this code, it it should be okay. But it uh, be okay. Right. yeah, but we we need to uh, we need yep. to document it uh, a mm -hmm. little more uh, this part. Got you. Got you. Got you. Right. Okay. And uh, how you got the data? Do you do you have the file? Like you are uh, right from file. So it, uh, I think you are reading some file or you are providing input to STD. And basically, I'm looking for yeah. BB frame, yeah. sample BB frame. Yeah. yeah. Normally, it it is it is some uh, STD in file with mm -hmm. BB frame. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now there is a lot of comments. And it is some patterns. So the BB frame is already 
done on, uh, for example, on 9.30, it's Potent 2.3, which means FEC 2.3. And if you can see it, it's just, uh, it's just a lens with some zero, but it's uh, well, a buffer with, a, um, with the right lens, only that. Uh, I didn't get that part. Uh, I wanted to understand, uh, do you have some sample VB frames uh, in file or? No, how well, I... it's, it's not really a good BB frame, but it's some buffer with the right lens of the BB frame. Ah, okay, okay. And there is the BB frame either on the, no, there is not a BB frame either. Uh, it's, um, <clears throat> As on the FPGA, uh, to change the FEC on fly, we have uh, four bytes before the BB frame. Okay. And these four bytes is indicated the FEC, for example. Okay. Okay. And sorry, for example, the uh, on the line eight, eight hundred twenty. Yep. You have part in two, three, uh, well, the, the first byte is uh, X31, which means mm -hmm. it is, uh, uh, as I remember, QPS key uh, 2.3 fake. Ah, so here you are forming the BB frame. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's, it's not the BB frame. It's, but, it's, yeah. the, it's the command to set the the right FEC of the uh, of the modulation and uh, the BB frame of well the the you need to uh, set the right length mm -hmm. according to this FEC FEC right 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 yeah. okay so here, uh, eight twenty five, eight twenty nine. So this is this is this is where you are forming just a sample zero, uh, a BB frame with zero bytes. This. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Absolutely. That's fine. Now, one more thing. Uh, like on server, I can get this package mosquito, but for client side, uh, so do I need to compile this, and I will get a, I will get a binary that I can run on client. Uh, this one is also running on the um, on the Prito. Uh, I didn't get it. Well, so the, I need to. Sorry. Uh, you need to compile that. Yeah. Yeah. And it needs to run on Pluto. Um. Yeah. You need okay, to so. run it on Pluto because, well, I don't use. Uh, Libio, I use directly the file system. Uh, so you have sys, bus, etc. So you need you. I use the file system of the IO device tree. Okay. So you need okay. to yeah. To, uh, this is the PS. So you need to run it. Uh, yeah, on your zinc. On your zinc, and mosquito yeah. is also on the zinc. Yeah, exactly. Server. And yeah. for client, uh, so you I said I can get a, I have a controller questions. package. Sorry, for the client? Yeah, uh, for, for client side, uh, I will I need to get uh, this MQTT controller package to be done on that. That runs on the client, right? Uh, on, the, on the PC. On the PC, right now, you, well, uh, yeah. You just need, uh, for example, MQTT Explorer is just an agnostic MQTT uh, sender and receiver. Okay. And you can send uh, some command uh, with that. Ah, OK, OK, got you. Got so you. This, is a, this is, there's applications that we need to have running on Petal Linux then, it sounds like. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah, we know how to do that. I think yep. this is uh, 
Well, I think it's similar to Bitroot. So you just need to add the package uh, Mosquito server, MQTT uh, server of Mosquito. And then, and then you have a, yeah, you have a server, MQTT server. Um, yeah, and then that server allows us to command the, the command the, the HDL essentially to, to, to order it around. Well, yeah, um, this this server is just um, an intermediate between the um, the outside, which is just some MQTT command and status, and the IO, which is just uh, on the zinc side. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, do, do we need to configure the server also? Is there any configuration file? Uh, do we need to change Yeah, it's a very minimum uh, configuration uh -huh. file. I mean, just... Um, um, I can't remember, but um, it's very minimum. I need to uh, to uh, catch the bid root one. Uh, um, Okay, so I go to uh, the Pluto REFRM uh, and then go to the uh, config uh, zinc Pluto and then search for mosquito. mosquito. Yeah, uh, mosquito. There is okay. So there is okay. Barrier uh, package mosquito is yes, and then I have some overlay maybe overlay on mosquito. Okay, there is one conf which is mosquito conf uh, and. Uh, it is okay. I just uh, set the listener, well, the port listener, the listener, and the protocol web socket. Uh, it's very standard configuration. Okay. So it's done here. I can show you. Uh, right. I, I get it. And, uh, I set it on the chat. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, see it. Yeah. And uh, Everest, uh, that means if we are using IIO, we don't need to set any DMA registers, control status, or set scatter exactly. gather list, or yeah, IIO. yeah. Um, with IIO, all the DMA is already done on the driver. On the driver side. Yeah, so you don't need to set it by hand, like you uh, did. <laughs> all the all the DMA is um, yeah is is done on the driver uh, already. Good. OK, got you. Yeah. Got you. And this Mosquito, uh, we can include it uh, when while we configure rootfs. Is it available as a package, or shall I? do we need to ex uh, install it externally? Uh, well, this is a build root package. So I think that uh, there is the equivalent uh, with uh, Peta Linux. OK. Yeah. Yeah, we'll check and make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think th that's that's good amount of information to get us started and move forward. Thanks a lot, Everest. That's all from my okay. side. <laughs> sorry. <Thank you>. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm not a, a lot available on this uh, holidays uh, with the children, so uh, I try to uh, follow you and try to help you, uh, but it's uh, very unheard of. <laughs> 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 no, it's a huge help. Thank you very much. We'll uh, we'll do all that we can to catch up and and you know we'll meet again and um, and hopefully show off some good progress and then 
if you see something that we need to do, then you can tell us and we'll just keep working yeah. together like this. Yeah. Yeah, big help. It, 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 uh, I think we're in good shape. Great. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Any other FPGA yep. work? Or any other, uh, anything else that anybody needs or any other questions? All right, thank you, everybody. We'll close the FPGA stand up for today and we will uh, look forward to the next time we meet. Uh, should be next Tuesday after DEF CON, there will be uh, most likely a lot of things to share. Um, but a lot of us, I think Anshul will be uh, in the lab, uh, but the rest of us from from Remote Lab West will um, be traveling and, and uh, demonstrating the uplink. So we will most likely have some good reports about what we need to do for the demodulator, the receiver side for the uplink, which will uh, rely on the FPGA as well. So that work is coming up. Uh, so yeah, see you, see you next week. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Have a good DEF CON. Oh, thank you. We're looking forward to it. Uh -huh.